Our group's presentation is about how the Anglo-Saxon people influenced the English language. To start off, I will give you a brief history and introduction to the Anglo-Saxon people, telling you who they are and where they are from. First of all, before the Anglo-Saxons came, there were various Celtic tribes who all shared common speech, customs, and a religion. However, they lacked political unity, which made them very vulnerable. This led to them being conquered by Rome in the first century. Latin did not have much of an influence on the language in England, and the Celtics gained independence from Rome in 410, which made them open to attack. This is where the Anglo-Saxons come in. In 450, various Germanic tribes, also known as Teutonic tribes, came into England and pushed the Celtics northwest into Scotland, Wales, Cornwall, and Ireland. These Germanic tribes consisted of many, many different small tribal groups, including the Angles, Saxons, Jutes, Frisians, and Franks. At first, the tribes were all called Saxons, but later on the name shifted to Angles, so now we refer to them as the Anglo-Saxons. Upon arrival, their various cultures and backgrounds meshed together and unified, which is why we refer to them as one group of people. The Anglo-Saxons kept on fighting with themselves and the Celtics. Then the next big historical marker occurred when, in the 6th and 7th centuries, the Anglo-Saxons carved out seven competing kingdoms known as Heptarchy. This lasted until the arrival of the Vikings. That was the historical background, and now I'm going to talk about the language background. Both Germanic languages and Celtic languages originated from Proto-Indo-European. Germanic started around the Elbe River about 3,000 years ago. As more people migrated to Europe, it split up into three subgroups, North Germanic, East Germanic, and West Germanic. West Germanic is what eventually turned into German and Old English, while North Germanic became various Scandinavian languages. The East Germanic dialect mi migrated to Southern Eastern Europe, eventually turned into Gothic, and died out. After the Saxons took control of the Heptarchy and joined merged with the Angles, the Anglo-Saxon language began to move farther away from the original language of their home country. At the same time, the Celts were being pushed out of their homeland. They came to settle on the European mainland. Eventually, Anglo-Saxon and Celtic meshed together, creating Old English. In terms of a language tree, Old English is most closely related to Old High German, Old Low Franconian, Old Saxon, and Old Frisian. All these languages originated from some form of a Germanic dialect. There are also lots of similarities in the languages themselves. For example, both Old English and the other languages originating from the Germanic language were written in a Latin alphabet. Now we're going to focus on Old English itself. Old English is also known as Anglo-Saxon. It is the predecessor to the language we speak today, which is known as Modern English. Although Old English led to Modern English, there are still many differences. In Modern English, we use a word order that could be referred to as subject, verb, object. An example of this would be, she kicked the ball. This word order is different from Old English, whose word order was subject, object, verb. Instead of she kicked the ball, it would be she, the ball, kicked. Old English also had gender articles for certain words, like many other languages today but we do not have this in our language. This is a recording and visual representation of Old English. Fadu ura, tu the yacht on hea for them. Si fi nama ya hal god. Toba kuna fi no riche. Ye wortha fi nwila on the orphan swa swa on hea for them. Wurani ye dag wang di kan flat, siula us to dag. And for you as you are yield us, swa swa way for you fat or a yield tender. And the year led to us on cost of you, I can use us of you for so teach you. As you can tell, Old English is nearly unintelligible to us, although we, what we speak currently is descended from it. The G is generally much softer than how we would use it today, but we can still recognize some of the words. For the Lord's Prayer in modern English, we can clearly understand what is trying to be conveyed, even if we don't use the word thy anymore. We can also see where many of our words are descended from Old English. Although they aren't spelled the same, the pronunciation is very similar. 
This is a common occurrence from Old English to Modern English. Over time, our pronunciation has evolved to become softer and easier to say. For instance, today we would pronounce the word have with the A as an ah. The Old English word that, trans that was directly translated to have was haven with a harsher A sound. Over time, words would become softer, smoother, and would develop into Middle English, then Modern English. There are a lot of words we use today from Old English, like about, almost, but, every day, and friendly. Only about a sixth of the words we use to write are from Old English, while over half of our spoken words are descended from Old English. The other portions are words from other languages like French and Latin. The probable reason for this occurrence is uh, because of the relation of language to social class. What we think of more formal words tend to come from Romance languages like Latin and French. These were often taught and spoken to aristocracy, while Germanic roots were for the common people. Spoken words are generally more casual, so it makes sense that nearly half of these words are of Germanic root. Writing is more formal and clearly has more influence from the Romance languages. There are four dialects of Old English spoken in the Anglo-Saxon Heptarchy, West Saxon, Kentish, Mercian, and Northumbrian. These dialects were established geographically, with Northumbrian spoken in the north, Mercian in the Midlands, West Saxon in the southwest, and Kentish in the southeast. Because the seven kingdoms weren't united, they were an easy target for the Vikings who managed to conquer six out of the seven kingdoms. The only kingdom that managed to remain independent was Wessex, which was ruled by King Alfred. Because of this, Wessex, West Saxon emerged as a standard dialect, especially for written communication, because the dialect of Wessex was West Saxon, and King Alfred managed to unite much of England. This dialect was given political significance, and this led to the establishment of a strong and united state. Because the rule of King Alfred had major influences on Anglo-Saxon England, most Old English literature is written in West Saxon. However, later forms of English after Old English have been very influenced by the Mercian dialect because this was the dialect spoken in London. The biggest influence of Mercian on standard modern English was spelling. Middle English started to be written down more commonly in the later 14th century after English became the official, languages of the, the official language of the courts in 1362. This took so long because of the Norman invasion of 1066. Because the Normans only spoke French, the upper class began to speak only French, while the lower class spoke English. Presumably, the upper class were the only ones who were able to write, so because they spoke French, they didn't write in English. Even before the Norman French conquest, people usually wrote in Latin, which was mostly influenced church and other religious terms because of the conversion to Christianity. Eventually, French lost its popularity, and people were encouraged to speak and write in English. By 1385, English began to be taught in schools. So the theme is that dialects and languages become the standard if they have political and cultural power and significance. And now I'm going to briefly pick up the historical narrative after the Anglo-Saxons. To put it in one quick sentence, there were a lot of invasions. The Scandinavian people, also known as the Vikings, came in, but didn't integrate into Anglo-Saxon society, while the Normans, following the arrival of the Vikings, came in and overwhelmed the English. Throughout all these invasions, the commoners always kept their Germanic roots, for while the rulers would bring over new words, the Anglo-Saxons were never, were never pushed out. For instance, in the Norman language class warfare that Trudy talked about earlier, the upper class of nobles spoke French, while the peasants kept their Anglo-Saxon Germanic roots and spoke Old English. This divide lasted until the languages of the upper class and lower class blended into Middle English. In conclusion, although the Anglo-Saxons do not stay in power very long. Their language continues to influence and shape, um, and shape English throughout many centuries and even today.